All right, guys, I'm back here again. Uh, I've got another Docker tutorial for you guys. Uh, this isn't really so much a tutorial as it is a uh, just kind of showing how I have my home server set up and running uh, with Docker. And I really, really, really like this configuration because I depend on this uh, for my business, for sharing files and for backing up files and doing those kinds of things. Um, and I depend on two main services for that. One is Nextcloud, and the other is Plex for all like my media serving stuff, a lot of entertainment, things like that. And um, this allows me to basically declare it all in one compose file, bring it the entire environment up and down in you know just a few seconds. And if I needed to move to a, a whole different server, it would be pretty simple to do you know there's there's no installation it's all the benefits of of docker install docker and then docker compose up and you're running um, let's take a look and uh, see exactly what I've got set up here because uh, I think it's it's pretty cool so the first uh, the two services that I use as I mentioned a while ago are both um, uh, nextcloud and Plex so Let's just start at the top of this file and go down. I'm using uh, Docker Compose version 2. No need to use version 3 here. Um, this is just the way I had it when I first started making this file. So anyway, um, under services, I have the first is uh, SSL proxy, which is based on this amazing image right here, which uses um, Nginx's reverse proxy to um, route to... Uh, well, to be a reverse proxy and, and, and route to different containers or physical servers, because I actually do that as well. And uh, its other added benefit is that it uses Let's Encrypt certs. It actually goes and gets the Let's Encrypt certification for you and renews it for you. And if you don't know what Let's Encrypt is, it's this um, amazing service that will... Um, give you free SSL certs, fully signed SSL certs, and this works fantastic. Oh my gosh, it's it's beautiful and it's so easy to do. Um, and the way this image is set up, and I encourage you to go look at his uh, documentation for this, but the way that this image is set up is, is such that all you have to do is pass in your server name. Uh, so in this case I have nextcloud.sample.com, and that's going to be the uh, name that it uses to go get the SSL cert for. It's also going to be the name that it by default sets the reverse proxy to listen on. Um, but I'll show you in just a second how I have that sort of changed to meet my needs. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> it does that and then this extra names, you can use it if you want if you need to get SSL certs for additional. It's like uh, uh, aliases for the SSL cert. So if I needed nextcloud.sample.com and sample.com or whatever to both be SSL, I could do that. Um, the ports that this listens on are 8080 and 443, the standard HTTP and HTTPS ports, uh, so that it can do all of its reverse proxy goodness and route all that stuff around. Uh, I've got two volumes mapped here in order to persist the data in the in the container and uh, it's mapped on my main drive here called data prime which is a four terabyte western digital red drive and uh, i've got the nginx conf mapped in here you don't have to do this um, but the reason that i do it is because again i i have made modifications to the uh, nginx uh, comp file so i mapped that directory in there the second one i have mapped is the actual let's encrypt certs um, are uh, is sit in a directory and uh, that way they can persist even when I bring all the containers down and and back up again um, so that's it for for that um, the next thing that I have is uh, the mysql instance I just have a single mysql instance running here uh, because the only thing that uses it is nextcloud and it's actually sitting if we look at the volumes we'll see that uh, it's not on data prime, not on my big drive, it is uh, in, under var mysql which is a solid state drive because I wanted the IOPS to be really high for mysql. Moving on down I have the environment variable set for 
MySQL. Um, again, I think based off the reading that I've done, it's uh, if I had multiple services, or m not multiple services, but multiple containers that depended on different MySQL um, containers. So in other words, if I had like Nextcloud and WordPress or whatever, and they both needed MySQL, I would actually make a MySQL-Nextcloud, a MySQL-WordPress, or whatever you want to name them, and run two separate MySQL instances, which is, you know, something that can apparently is, is, is a good practice from what I read. And the, uh, but let me know in the comments if that's totally wrong, but from everything I've read, that's a good thing to do. So anyway, um, I'm going to move on down here. I have uh, Nextcloud. Uh, this is the Nextcloud container, and I'm not using the official image because it was kind of... They were trying to break everything up too much, in my opinion, and I wanted something simpler, so I went with this wonderfall-nextcloud. Uh, Go look it up. It's a great image. Uh, got a crap ton of downloads. And it basically allows you to declare a lot of the standard configuration stuff straight through uh, the environment variables. And then uh, down here I've got uh, depends on set, which is this great feature in Docker Compose, which basically says, hey, if this container um, comes up and MySQL or any of the containers that are listed under depends on are not up yet, then wait. So if this container started and MySQL had not started yet, it would wait for MySQL to start, then it would start up. Very cool feature because otherwise Nextcloud would be like, I don't have a um I don't have a database. So anyway, I have some volumes mapped there. Again on my data prime, I have all that good stuff mapped. Um to persist the apps and the configuration and the data. And then I also have my TV and movies, which is a separate drive. I have that mounted uh, into a, uh, just a directory that I made called TV and movies. That way I can uh, use Nextcloud. I can add this into my Nextcloud as an external drive. It's an extension in Nextcloud. And that way, all I have to do is when I want to add a new movie or a new TV show, I just drag it straight into Nextcloud, and boom, there it is. Uh, we're listening on uh, port 8080, or I'm sorry, 8080, port 8888, uh, which is the default listening port for um, Nextcloud. And then basically what happens, and I'll show this in a minute in the, uh, the proxy up here, Let's jump back up here real quick, not to confuse things, but the SSL proxy routes the traffic uh, when it comes in for this nextcloud.sample.com. Again, this is just an example URL, but when it comes in for the real URL, it will make sure that it goes to 443 over SSL, uses the Let's Encrypt cert, and then routes it behind the scenes in my network to uh, port 8888, which is what... Nextcloud is listening on here. So moving on down, here is Plex, and um, this is a great Plex image. Uh, go check it out. All these images on Docker Hub, and um, I have two volumes mapped for persisting data. I have the Plex uh, config so that I keep all my data, all of my, uh, I don't have to go re-download all of the information about all the TV shows and movies and stuff like that every time I bring this up and down. And then I also have TVs and movies mapped into a directory in the container as well. This is the same drive here that we see up here in um, Nextcloud. So that's Plex. Plex is listening on the default uh, uh, ports. And moving on down, um, I have... This is the only... The only uh, Docker um, image that uh, doesn't come from Docker doesn't come from Docker Hub that uh, I built specially for this. So I don't. I have two Western Digital four terabyte RAID drives in my server, and one of them is Data Prime, 
and the other one is data prime dash failover. I don't have RAID. Um, I don't have a nice RAID card or anything, and I don't want to do software RAID because that's just a pain in the butt. And this is a really nice declarative way to synchronize the data uh, using rsync between the primary drive and this failover drive. And um, if you guys are interested, I will upload this uh, uh, Docker image to Docker Hub so you can download and use it. But what this does, we've got uh, build right here, and this builds off of a Docker file that's in the same directory. That's why I just have the dot. That means go look for the standard Docker file in this directory and build it and name its image this. So this Docker rsync schedule uh, container that I built, uh, image that I built, um, basically says take anything that, any directory that's mapped to the source directory in the container and sync it using rsync to the uh, dest, uh, the destination directory in the failover. So I have my data prime drive mapped as the source and my data prime failover mapped as the destination and I have a schedule set through an environment variable that every night at 8.30 it will uh, run a cron drop and run a synchronization between the source and the dest. And if anything gets deleted from the source, it will be deleted from the destination. Anything added to the source will be added to the destination. All file permissions and everything stay intact. That's the beauty of rsync. The one thing I haven't really added to this uh, whole Docker setup here is an off-site backup. I will be adding that later. I've already got some ideas on how I want to do that uh, to back it up to a uh, secondary source that I have available to me. So anyway, this is uh, this is the Docker file, and not to make this video really long, but I want to jump over and show you the uh, the proxy configuration file for this uh, setup. So this is the this will be the SSL um, the the uh, Nginx SSL proxy configuration. Um, you can it's based completely off of the one that came with this image. Just went to his GitHub and and pulled the proxy conf out. Uh, he actually tells you to do that in the documentation. So I pulled that out and um, I'm just going to want to briefly show you what it does. What it's doing here at the top is it's listening on port 443. So when traffic comes in on port 443 with a server name of nextcloud.sample.com, which is what we see over here, what we, request, what we requested the uh, Nextcloud cert for, it will use the Let's Encrypt certs that exist, set all of the correct headers, and then it will come down here and uh, it will eventually do a proxy pass to an IP address. And this is the IP address of the Docker server that I have, the internal IP address, and it will route those requests for Nextcloud over 443 to 8888, which is what the Nextcloud container is listening on. So we can access Nextcloud through SSL. Works beautifully. Um, I'm going to scroll on down here because this is a little out of order and show you if traffic were to come in on port 80 to the server name nextcloud.sample.com, again, just an example, um, it would go ahead and do a 301 redirect to um, uh, to the server name that was requested, so it would go boom and go all the way back up here and do this one. Uh, you noticed that, probably noticed that down here, um, if it comes into this directory, if the request was made to for this endpoint, it would uh, do this stuff down here, and this is uh, all about um, let's encrypt being able to verify the domain and give you the right certificate and everything. So it's really cool that this image has all that set up for you. Um, I am running a, another site in here, and this is one of the big reasons why I customized this configuration file. This site doesn't need to listen on uh, port 443. It only needs to be over 80. It doesn't have an SSL cert. And it actually exists on a whole separate host, an entirely separate physical server. So as you notice, its IP address is 
12. And this IP address for the Nextcloud box, which is the Docker box, is dot 11. So what happens is, is when a request comes in over port 80 for uh, site 2, again, just an example, as if you didn't know, uh, it will route that to the internal address of uh, 253.12 on port 80. If if a request came in for site 2 over 443, it would basically 301 that to the HTTP version of it. So I hope that made sense. If it didn't make sense, uh, let me know and maybe I'll do a video on uh, Nginx stuff. Um, but you can also just go check out the Nginx pro reverse proxy uh, documentation and get a good idea of what's going on. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, if you want me to make more videos, if you want me to do more stuff, then like, comment, subscribe, share, all those things, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.